So we are, um, I'm Shara Chapek. Matt Chapek. And I am originally from Alberta, Canada. Are you gonna be okay? I don't think you are. I think you're gonna be too much. Worst case scenario, I just take her. And you just do this by yourself. Yeah, that's true. That's also an option. Um, I am from Canada, Alberta, Canada. And I have been coming to Anchor Church for about a little over a year now. My husband and I moved to the island about three years ago. And yeah, our friends had talked about Anchor and had mentioned that we should come. We had tried a few other churches on the island and they just didn't really seem like home. And then we ended up finding Anchor Church. And from the second that we walked like onto the campus and just like walked into the building, I feel like we like both looked at each other, my husband and I, um, and just thought like, this is it. This is the place that we want to be. We were like greeted so friendly and just like so welcomed um, by Trevor and Sarah. And they invited us to dinner like the first Sunday that we came here and like they stuck to their word. We actually <laughs> went to dinner with them and just got to know them. And yeah, it's been an incredible like year so far of just building community and we love it here so much. And the view is also amazing. Matt and I got married um, 14 years ago. We met in Montana and got married in Montana. We lived there for almost 10 years and we were both missionaries and part of a missions organization called YWAM. So it's Youth with a Mission. And so my husband was the worship leader at the campus there. Um, he would travel all over the world and he would lead worship. And I was a Bible teacher and I ran a Bible school there. It was called the School of Biblical Studies. And so I spent all of my time basically reading the word and teaching the word uh, to students from all over the world. We had like pastors and um, like non-Christians and like from one end of the spectrum to the other who would come and just, yeah, want to learn about the Bible. And so that's what, what um, brought us together. And yeah, so we got married pretty quickly and yeah, got married in Montana and um, always wanted to start a family. That was kind of like something that was on the top of our list. And uh, yeah, like I knew my husband is like the silliest, craziest guy ever. And he's kind of like a big kid himself. And so I knew that he would be like such a great uh, father one day. And so we were like really excited after I'd say about two years of being married. Um, we just knew like we want to start a family. And so, yeah, um, that was like our plan. And uh, yeah, things did not work out um, how we thought they would. So after about a year of trying, um, yeah, I felt really discouraged because we were surrounded by like all of our friends who were like the same age as us and they were all having families getting married and, you know, having babies and stuff like that. And so, you know, that just kind of seemed like the next step. And so we were just kind of wondering like, you know, that's, that's crazy. It's taking so long, but also, you know what? We had so much hope. We knew we were still young, like, it was gonna be fine. And then after year two of trying and still not getting pregnant, um, I, yeah, I became really confused. Um, still wondering like what's going on. I, I questioned a lot, like, is there something wrong with me? Am I broken? Um, I know that God is the creator of like life and he was the creator of my body and my womb. And I just didn't know what was going on. So a lot of uh, questioning. You know, I thought like there was something majorly wrong with me. And then after year three um, of trying and still uh, not having any luck with that, yeah, major confusion um, because we were surrounded by like so many Christians. Like we were living in this bubble of Christians and they were all giving us words. Like that was probably the biggest confusing part was um, the well-meaning believers who felt like they needed to share with us um, like the hope or like the words or the prophetic messages or dreams that they were given um, about having a baby. And it honestly felt like it was like every week that this was happening. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's really, um, it kind of messes with your mind and your heart and your faith a little bit when you have so many people telling you that something is gonna happen and it doesn't happen. 
And so, yeah, I really struggled with like this idea of, you know, I trust these people and I know that they hear from God. I feel like I hear from God too. Um, but what they're saying is going to happen wasn't coming true. And so, yeah, that really uh, kind of messed with my heart and my faith a lot. Um, and then after year four, I think that was probably, I would say, my lowest point. Um, we just went on a roller coaster of emotions. Um, every emotion you could imagine. I mean, it, like four years of, of hoping for something and wanting something and it not coming true. Uh, yeah, that was, that was really tough. Um, one thing that we really tried to do though, like I'm really proud of us is that we tried our hardest not to let it affect our marriage. Um, we had a lot of friends who had, were struggling with, uh, the same thing and we saw it, um, like some people, it, it like tore their marriage apart and we just knew that we didn't want that to happen to us. Um, so we, we tried really hard not to let it affect our marriage. Um, I mean, obviously it was going to affect our marriage, but not like ruin our marriage. And so to be honest, we didn't really talk about it a lot. Um, it was, but it was like the elephant in the room that we didn't, we knew was there, but we didn't really like talk about. Um, and we talked about, like, we knew there were other ways that you could build a family. Um, we talked about adoption that came up a lot. I know that, um, many friends had adopted um, their children and like had great experiences with it. And we knew that was always something we could do, but every single time we thought about it and we prayed about it and we talked about it, it just didn't seem like it was the path for us. Like that just didn't seem like what we felt we were supposed to do. So yeah, um, we decided not to go down that route. Um, and so then after this time, Matt and I decided to leave YWAM. So we moved away from Montana and we moved to Florida. Um, we just, we felt like we were going to help plant a church there and um, things didn't quite work out the way that we thought they would. And so we were in Florida for about a year and a half. And then um, we just started talking about uh, making some changes because it just wasn't the place for us. And we both knew that. And uh, so we decided that we wanted to move to Canada because that's where I'm from and that's where all my family is. And so we just thought, you know what? We're really lonely here in Florida. We didn't really like have a great community there. And uh, we wanted to be closer to family. And we thought, you know, if we're not going to be like mom and dad, at least we could be aunt and uncle because we have six nieces. And we thought like, let's move back there and watch them grow up. And that would be great. And so we did that. We moved <laughs> to Canada and uh, yeah, it was great. But I will say it was, it was kind of isolating in the fact that um, it's really interesting to watch everybody, you know, like the, like your close core group of people have families and children and you're the only ones who don't. That's really an interesting place to be in. And it's really isolating because, um, yeah, I just like, it messed with me mentally and like, I try not to let it, but it was just really hard not to feel like, you know, the third wheel in a way because everybody's having conversations and all the moms want to talk about their kids and all that kind of stuff. And I, I just felt like I couldn't relate to them. Uh, so that was kind of a struggle. And yeah, so then uh, we're living in Canada and after the fifth year of trying and still nothing, that is the, the year I call um, the year of anger for me. I became so angry and just like bitter towards God because um, I knew that he could make this happen and he wasn't, he wasn't making it happen. And I was really angry. Um, yeah, I would love to sit here and say that I still had so much hope and I was like, I'm not giving up. You know, this is something that people have told us is going to happen and, you know, like prophesied over us and stuff. But uh, that's not, <laughs> that was not where my heart was. My heart was completely just angry and bitter. And, um, we did get tested. If you're wondering, we, we did go and get all the tests and all the procedures done and things like that. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'll never forget. We we're sitting in the doctor's office and she basically said to us, um, you both have something called unexplained infertility. So there was nothing physically wrong with either of us. We just couldn't have a baby and they didn't know why. And that was 
kind of a huge slap in the face. I remember sitting there and just thinking like, you know what, I'm done, I'm done with this. And yeah, that dream that I had in my heart of like wanting a child, I just felt like I, after that doctor's appointment and like hearing that, I, I just thought, you know what? I'm done being angry. I'm done being bitter about this. I'm gonna just not feel anything. And so then I honestly just like became very numb. Yeah, I was so numb about it. And I just felt like that, like that dream that I had, that hope that I had of something that I wanted so badly in my heart, it was like that dream center inside of me just died. Like I just let it go and said, you know what? I'm not feeling anything about this. <sighs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of a, that was a rough point, but you know what? I just thought that was the best way to handle it. And yeah, after year six, I will never forget this. So we are, in Canada, I'm standing in my kitchen. I think I was making dinner or something. And I like audibly hear the voice of the Lord. And he asks me, who am I to you when you don't get your way? And I was really taken aback by that because like up until this point, he had been basically silent. Um, there had been a few times where I had had dreams um, of us having like a little girl and I would wake up and I was just like so confused because, you know, it just seemed like he was like taking this thing and he was dangling it in front of me and just like teasing me. And yeah, I would wake up and just be <laughs> completely like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, after the Lord asked me that question um, and just, you know, like wondering, who, like, who is he to me when I don't get my way? I really had to think about that because like, who is Jesus to me and who is Jesus to us when we don't get what we want? And I really think that that is something that's like a fundamental question that is pivotal and vital to any believer that we need to ask ourselves is, you know, is he just like someone that we go to when we want something? You know, like, who is he? Like, is he still who he says he is? Is he still good when things aren't going the way that I want them to? And I really like, I took that and I just started like studying the word more and I just like wrestled with that question. And it honestly was the biggest turning point for me in my heart and my faith because I, I knew like there, there were, I spent years studying the Bible and teaching the Bible. I knew all the stories that are in there. I knew the truths of who he was. I knew all the promises that he had given and all of those things. And I love the word of God. I love Jesus. I love the truth. I love teaching truth. And I feel like I had forgotten um, a lot of his character because of this thing that we were going through. And yeah, I just like started going on this journey, this incredible journey of um, like asking myself that. And yeah, it was amazing because I feel like from that point on, I like, I was like, you know what? I am going to like stop making this about me and start like fully actually living in the truth of who God is. And that was like so awesome because it drastically changed my faith and my heart and things like that. I mean, Matt and I were missionaries for almost 10 years. We have seen some things. We have seen some incredible miracles. And it was like, God was reminding me of that. He was reminding me of who he is. I mean, we've seen like <laughs> deaf people here again. Um, we've seen crippled people walk. Um, we lived for years with like $2 in our bank account and God always came through, always came through for us. He always supplied everything that we needed. And I was just reminded of that. I was reminded of the fact that God is good. He is a good father. And I, I never wanted to forget that. And so that was like such a turning point for me and it was amazing. And so I just started like taking this, this thing, this bitterness, this anger, this numbness, this dream, um, and this fist that I had that was like closed. And I just started like surrendering. And I just went through this like process and this journey of just being like, God, like, I don't want to live 
this life of thinking that I am the center of it anymore. Like I want you to be the center of my life. I want you to be the one that I'm living for. And so I just got to a place where I literally was so surrendered to him and who he is that like, I mean, I can't even count how many times we had people, well-meaning people who would come up to us and, and ask us things like, you know, when are you going to start having babies? Like you're not getting any younger and just like things that <laughs> I don't think people realize the comments that they make that it can be like so hurtful. Grace upon grace. And yeah, there are so many lessons that I learned through all of this that um, I feel like <laughs> were vital, you know, like watch what we say, things like that. But yeah, it was such a great um, season after this because I feel like the Lord used this to kind of inspire a bit of our ministry. And so from this point on, um, things started opening up for us, especially um, for myself because I was so passionate about like talking about infertility. Um, I feel like it's something that people don't really talk about a lot. And I know it happens. It, like a lot of people experience it, but they don't really talk about it. And so I was so passionate about talking about it and just like being someone that people could go to if they wanted um, to just have a support system. And just, you know, even educating people on like, hey, these are some things that you should say to people and these are some things that you shouldn't say because a lot of times we don't know what to say when people are going through something challenging. And yeah, it was just really cool. Um, it was kind of like a ministry that I had where I was invited to like speak at our church and I was able to talk about it and just like the journey that we had gone through and just like the emotions and the the heartache and just the hope and <laughs> the wanting and then like the the waiting and being left, you know, with not what you want and just still coming out the other side of being able to say, you know, God, I trust you and you're good. And so when we had people who would, you know, say things to us that maybe didn't feel great or even going to church on Mother's Day, that was so painful for so many years because, you know, like that's the day that we celebrate mothers, which of course we should celebrate mothers. Mothers are amazing. But it was so painful to go there as someone who wanted to be a mom so bad and I couldn't. And so I would avoid Sundays on Mother's Day. I wouldn't go. Um, but yeah, after, after like kind of walking on the other side of just like getting like the healing that I had and just, um, yeah, surrendering this, this dream to God, I felt like I like was able to go to church on mother's day and I was so happy for the moms. I wasn't angry or bitter and I didn't feel jealous. I was just so elated for them because I could see that like God had given them such an incredible gift. Um, so yeah, that kind of was, uh, where we were at in Calgary and, um, you know, we were, li we were living such a great life. Like we loved our life, but then COVID happened and, uh, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> we all I'm sure have our stories about that, but, um, within t about a month of each other, Matt and I both got laid off from our jobs. And, you know, we were like, that was really jolting and um, we just didn't know what we were going to do. And we started asking each other, you know, we, at this point we had been living in Canada for about six years and we kind of started dreaming and just talking and asking each other, like, if we can do anything with our life, what would we do? What would we want to do? And uh, that was really fun. Matt's the dreamer. I'm definitely like not, I want a schedule and I want like routine and I want things to stay the same forever. <laughs> That's like where my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, we both started dreaming about it and just asking each other, like if we could do anything, what would we do? Because we didn't have any like children who were in school or anything like that, who, um, you know, we would have to uproot their lives or we didn't have jobs that were holding us back. And so we kind of just felt like we had this like blank slate where we could just, if we could do anything, what would we do? And I don't know where this idea came from, but um, it popped into Matt's head and we talked about it and he was like, you know, what if we decided to move to Hawaii? Um, and I thought he was insane. Like, what? There's no way that could happen. And I, I'm like such a researcher, so I seriously started like Googling and researching like, 
all the reasons not to move to Hawaii. And so I would re- I would purposely like read these stories of like <laughs> reasons why people are like, do not move their effort. And I would read them out loud to him to try and like use them as um, fuel for like saying like, there's no way we can do that. And yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I tried everything I could to try and like fight this, but like deep down in like the core of who I was, I felt like I could just feel it in my soul that this is maybe something that the Lord was asking us to do. And so we prayed about it. I cried every single day for like a month of just being like, God, is this seriously what you want? Like, what if it doesn't work out? What if, what if we fail? You know, what if we do this and we again decide to move and uproot our entire lives from our family and our friends and our community and my country? And what if it doesn't work out? And, uh, yeah, we had a friend who said to us, you know, you're ne- you never know if you're going to sink or swim unless you get out of the boat. And that was really like a good challenge because I thought that's a really good point. Like we have no idea if it's going to work out unless we try. And, you know, Peter walked on water and I thought like, God, can we do this? Can we actually like get out of the boat and walk on water and like do this crazy impossible thing? We had no jobs lined up, nowhere to live. We had no idea what we were going to do. Um, but you know what? We, we decided to go for it. So we decided to um, sell like 95% of everything we owned. And we just started like listing everything on Facebook Marketplace and things like that. And yeah, we basically sold everything we owned and the rest of the things that we wanted to keep, we put into an eight, fi- eight by eight foot shipping container and we decided to move to Hawaii. <laughs> and that was... A crazy, crazy thing, but I can honestly say now after doing that and being here now for three years, it is the best decision that we've ever made. We absolutely love it here. Um, The Lord blessed us. Uh, We were able to buy a condo in Mililani and just even that was like a crazy story on its own. And yeah, so we like bought a home here and yeah, I cannot believe we live in Hawaii. So this is our miracle baby, Haven June. We found out that we were pregnant a little over a year after we moved here. I still can't believe that it's true. I look at her every single day and I just cannot believe that this is what God had for us. We wanted it so bad and there were so many years that we like struggled and we went through all of the things that you can imagine, the motions and and things like that. And yeah, God, like he didn't forget that dream. And something that he reminded me of is the, um, the, in Ezekiel 37, the story about where he takes Ezekiel in a vision and he goes and he sees the valley of dry bones and, um, he like starts bringing them to life. And the Lord reminded me of that. And just like how, I mean, we had wanted. So unfortunately real life happened and Haven was not happy. And so her and Matt have decided to just give us some peace and quiet. Thank you. Um, But yeah, so like I was saying, um, about a year after we moved here, we found out like shockingly that we were pregnant. And it was insane. Like, I'm not even kidding you when I say that that dream and that hope that I had of wanting a child, like, was so dead. Like, it was something that we just didn't even think about. We were so focused and set on living our life with just the two of us. And we were so happy. We had an amazing, incredible life. You know, we were going to the beaches every weekend and we were going hiking. We were going to get a dog. We bought this tiny little car that would be perfect to like go around the island and fit in the parking spaces actually. And we just loved our life. And we would say to each other all the time, God, you're so good. We, I can't believe we get to live this life. I can't believe how good you are to us. And yeah, when we found out that we were expecting, I have never felt shock like that in my entire life. Like I could not believe that it was true. I could not believe that that was real. And the Lord reminded me of the passage in Ezekiel 37, where he takes Ezekiel like in a vision to the Valley of the Dry Bones. And he's, you know, looking at these dry bones and he asks him what he sees. And you know, it's these bones, they're they're dead bones. And then the Lord like brings them to life. And he just reminded me of that passage because that's literally what he was able to do in my life. 
this dream and this hope that I had of wanting a baby so bad, um, it was so dead. Like it was non-existent. I like, pre it, I was put on a shelf and I was like, you know what? I'm like, good, we can't have children. And we were fine with that. We were, we had moved on and we were so okay with um, it just being the two of us. Like we were honestly talking about like our retirement years. That was kind of where we were at. And then, yeah, this insane, crazy miracle happened. And the Lord literally like took that dream. He didn't forget that dream that I had, that he placed in my heart and all of the promises and all of the words that people had spoken to us. And even the dreams that I had had of us having a little girl. And it just like all came flooding back to me. And he just reminded me um, that like, he can take something that is dead, like absolutely no life in it. And like that he can breathe life into it and it can come alive. And that's exactly what he did for us. Like our little girl is the best thing that's ever happened to us. And she is our miracle. And I, every single day that I look at her, I just cannot believe that this is our reality and that this is, like, she's a dream come true. She's a miracle. And she is a living testimony. Um, that, like we have seen the goodness of God. We have seen him come through. We have seen him as the miracle worker, all of the things that we sing about and the character of God that he says he is, he is who he says he is. He is a, a good father. And he showed us that um, with, with our little girl. And yeah, it was definitely, it took a while to get over the shock. And um, yeah, it was funny when we found out we were pregnant, uh, a lot of people asked me, like, were you just so excited? Were you so elated? Did you just like jump up and down and freak out? And if I'm being completely honest, uh, that was not my first feeling. Like joy was not my first feeling. After the shock wore off, I was like so anxious. I was so worried because to be honest, we had become so content with that idea of it just being the two of us and living just him and I, that I honestly like worried, like what is this gonna do to our life? Like we we're so comfortable now living our life with just the two of us, like how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna be parents? We're not young anymore. Like we waited over 10 years and I definitely struggled with like anxiety, major stress. And um, yeah, one night the Lord woke me up at like three o'clock in the morning and uh, he literally just started like speaking to me and like giving me this word and just telling me like, you're gonna have a little girl and you're gonna name her Haven and her name means like a safe and peaceful place. And you don't have to worry about her taking anything from you. She is a gift. Children are a gift from God and she is only gonna bring like so much richness to your life and just like downloading all this like amazing truth about her. And it was like, from that point on, I did not fear. I didn't have any stress. I felt so much peace for my whole entire pregnancy because this was probably only about four days after we found out we were pregnant that um, I had this like, this word from him. And I'm not even kidding you, the entire pregnancy um, and even having her was just like the most peaceful experience ever. It was so cool to see God come through in that. And yeah, like I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed and so, overcome with joy that the Lord, like he can, he can seriously do anything. And I just feel like there's so much hope by it. And one thing that I was praying about when I was thinking about this is that like, there are so many people that I know who are struggling with a, like a dream in their heart that maybe is dead or just like hope and feeling hopeless and wanting something so bad. And I just feel like if the Lord can do it for us, like he can do it for anybody. Yeah, he's so good.